an easy way to stay organized when you're trying to look after your nutrition will be about meal prep. There are multiple ways that you can do meal prep and it doesn't always have to be lining out your seven days worth of food on the side of your counter every Sunday afternoon. So the best three ways that I would actually say to do, to do meal prep. One is called three in the fridge and four in the freezer. What you're gonna do with that is that you're gonna prep out seven days worth of food. You're gonna split it into three days and put three days worth of the, the, the large quantity meals within the fridge. Anything that doesn't need cooking like oats, fruit, all of those areas, protein powder, do not need to be prepped straight away. They can be done on the day. And then to keep the others fresh during the rest of the week, you can put them in the freezer and then you can bring them out the day before that you're going to use it. It keeps everything so automatic that all you need to do is think about getting your food out of the fridge and eating it over time. For you people that are really, really, really busy and you don't want to think about when you're going to cook food, how it's going to feel, what it's going to do, it's going to be super important for you to do that then. For, you, for those that are looking for those, as I call it on the, on the Instagram post, Michelin starred meals, this isn't going to be 100% what you're accustomed to. If you're so used to using fresh food, this may be a slight small change. But there will be a trade-off between how long you can spend in the kitchen, the decisions that you make, and how much you prepare in time. Often, those that are the most prepared have the easiest way to, to stay on track. If everything is done in the fridge, it'd be very, very hard for you to go off track. If you have to prepare every single day, there are a lot of things that can get in the way of you making the right decisions. Whether it's decision fatigue, when you're totally stressed in the rest of your day, the environment having an impact on you, whether it's the kids annoying you, uh, your husband wanted to go and get a takeaway, family cooking something else. It's so easy to take your mind off the goal and what you're prepared, that having something prepared is really, really, really important. So that's number one, three in the fridge, four in the freezer. Second one is doing two days at a time. So what you want to do for this is that you want to cook the evening meal on a Monday, but make double portions. So you make that for Monday and then again for Tuesday night. That way you can do the same Monday, Tuesday, you miss a day in the kitchen, which is going to be really, really beneficial. So you can spend less time overall. This will allow you to double up on your portions. It means that you may have to use the same meal sources. Like if you were going to use chicken, you'd have to use it two days in, in, a, in a row and you'd use the same vegetables. You'd make something like a stir fried chicken or stir fried tofu, wrap it all together, split it in half, and that would be two evenings worth of food. The last way that you wanna do it is by utilizing food sources that are easy to prepare. As I mentioned before, protein powder, yogurt, berries, fruits, um, packaged pre-cooked pre stuff will always be really, really easy to prepare. So if you really do ha don't have any time to prepare and you don't wanna cook fresh every single day, or you don't have the time, or you want to make sure that you're on track every day, use things that are pre-prepared. You can go to Aldi nowadays and get some really good quality ready meals. You can go and get um, the pre-cooked chicken or the pre-cooked uh, protein sources from any of the Sainsbury's, Tesco's or Aldi. And then you can use these in days like this when you have less to prepare. Over time, the quantity of meals may not be great because ideally in the long term, you want to be finding a solution that works for you over the long term. For most of my clients and even for myself included, I do some level of batch cooking, some level of meal prep every single week. When I'm dieting, it is more structured towards having, having no thought about it so I can just pick out the fridge and eat it at the designated time that I have. But more in the lifestyle phase where I am at the moment, I will just prepare my protein for the day and the rest of my day I'll cook fresh. So most of my day is in the morning, it's already pre-prepped stuff. It's protein powder, it's cereal, and it's a nut butter spread. For lunch, it's going to be eggs and toast, which take very, very little prep time. And then for the evening meal, it's something like chicken and potatoes or rice or a, or a dish like that, which means I will cook that one fresh, but the, the chicken will already be done, marinated and ready to be just put on the fryer up and down a few times and it's ready to go. You can work out what's best for you. There'll be, there'll be what's best for you during the diet and then there'll be what's best for you during a lifestyle. In that diet phase, it's really important to limit the amount of decisions that you make on a day-to-day -day basis to make it foolproof, to make it stress-proof, to make it uh, life's eventualities proof. Once you can do that during that diet phase, it'll make you more consistent. It'll make you more routined. 
and make you more prepared so you can spend less time doing the food and you can spend more time doing more steps out with the family, spending more time in, in anywhere else but the kitchen. In a lifestyle phase, you can really decide on what you want to have as your setup and what works for you and the family. If you're cooking for other people, it, your, your choices will be molded around other people as well. So make things fit towards your lifestyle, but have a think about how it affects your diet over the long term. If you're a person that has cooked fresh for forever or always use parents cooking, think about how those decisions are going to impact your your food choices, how you stick to the diet, how you stick to your calorie allowance and how that's going to elongate your diet or shorten your diet uh, for the better or for the worst.